Hey guys, Anthony Jones here with the Top Gun Jumbo, and this video was a much requested um, from you guys on YouTube, as well as some individuals who have asked me multiple times on Instagram. Um, this video is about flush pull latches. Uh, it's a video I never really intended on doing because there's already a lot of really good videos on YouTube that I have actually watched and learned from. Um, of course, I put my own spin on things, and I'll show you in this video what I did a little different. But nonetheless, um, we're taking uh, flush latches that I've ordered off Amazon, and we're modifying them to accommodate the needs of my decking, beefing them up a little bit. Um, it's just a unique install process. So there's a little bit more that, than what meets the eye when you look at them. You would think that it's a simple bolt-in process, but it's a little more to it. And you'll see in this video, I go way way in depth. So I hope that you enjoy it. Um, I've been going more in depth with my detail because I'm getting some positive feedback from you guys that really um, are saying that you're taking more away from it and learning from the channel. That's what it's all about guys. So thank you so much. If you're new to the channel and uh, you like what you see and you can take something away from it, man, kindly subscribe to my channel. I would really greatly appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for the next video, guys. It's going to be on the Gastra install. Um, so that's it. Until next time, may your tiny book builds be great. Thanks. What's up, guys? So in my last video, I finished up the rear end, for the most part, on this boat, the Top Gun Jumbo. I did my clean hidden hinge install. So you'll know if you watch that video, it's a two-part series. Um, I went very, very in-depth on the install. These, uh, these hatches don't have struts. They do have flush pull latches. Okay, they're already installed. Actually, if you look in my boat, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven total flush pull slam latches in my boat. They're all installed. But the deal is, I've gotten a lot of people asking me specifically about my latches and also about struts. I was never going to do a video on latches because to me, it's like the simplest thing to put in. You, you literally drill a hole through wood and attach a latch. But the more I thought about it, what's simple to me really isn't simple to everybody else. Um, I do have a background in this stuff and I'm pretty hardcore about building things, the boat, um, things around the house. So uh, the more people ask me, the more I thought, you know, might as well do a video on it. Now, that's not to take away from any of videos out there. There's a lot of videos, and that's another reason I didn't want to do one. There, there's some really good ones. I always say it, but Michael Lopez has some great videos on um, the latches and the struts and um, and fire ant fishing. Man, I think I think I watched fire ant fishing's video when I was starting my boat on his. Uh, his struts and latches and it really helped me so probably everything i say in this video is going to be regurgitated information that others have already done but you know if you're subscribing to the channel and you like to see how i do it i'm going to go ahead and show you there's one thing that i do um or, or that i've done maybe two things that i think is a little bit different and we're going to go over that in this video so what i've gotten here is um I've got some new latches, so let's talk about those. All right, so these latches, man, let me just say this. For number one, guys, when I did all these in my boat, I got them on Amazon. They were like $10 a piece. I ended up ordering like seven or eight of them, and then I, I don't know, I kept changing my plans as I went along, and I ran out, and then I got back on Amazon. So they were like $10 a piece, and then Amazon was sold out. So I had to get on the eBay and order them from eBay 
and uh man it was a pain well of course i don't know what's going on in this world i get on amazon recently because i'm like well let me do this video and um dude they the same exact ones look sold as set all right now i don't know how long this is gonna last but a mara made a, a, i can't even say that a marine made two inch black locking saw two pieces okay sold as set two of these guys now let me show you this all right see that little code Shing Kong, hey, yeah, yeah. Uh, SK1070. Can you guys see that? Check this out, bro. Up, oh, you can't see it. Up, oh. same VIN number. Long story short, same, same, same thing. So I paid double over a year ago when i ordered all mine i paid double for what you could get them on amazon two for ten now man that's freaking smoking ridiculously cheap so that's what we're using is these and uh and i'm going to talk about how i install these things we're going to take this hatch i'm going to break this one loose and we're going to do an install a reinstall and, I, and we're going to demo it and i'm going to show you how i do it all right so like i said since all of my flush latches are already installed and i never plan on making this video but we're going to do it anyhow that means i got to take one out so we're going to take this one out all right before i do that i want to show you something important okay and i think i think we could learn some things because of this is not going to be a step-by-step -step install it'll be a step-by-step -step install and me actually taking this out and i'm going to show you something unique about how i installed it that i feel really makes it a lot a lot stronger so number one this is just going to go together like this basically you're going to drill a hole through your hatch this slides through then this locks on okay two little screws well i'm just going to tell you right now those two little screws don't do a whole lot because i told you these things are five dollars when i bought them they're ten they're not the greatest most well made you're screwing screws into plastic and then expecting this thing to not spin around or expecting these holes not to strip out or none of this to crack or break, which that's going to happen. So what I've done is, is, is number one, I've added, I've added some extra screws through this part, kind of like a toenail. They're angled out, okay, because you have to angle them out because your hole is cut and your latch is going through. So... That's the first thing. That secures this to keep it from spinning, okay? And it really, really pushes this down and holds it tight to the latch, okay? Number two. We'll go ahead and let's take these out. And, of course, I'm going to show you more of this, guys, when we do the install. Number two, you'll notice, now I can't get this thing out. Everything is coated in Gorilla Glue Construction Adhesive, my unofficial sponsor of the Top Gun John Boat. It's all glued in. I mean, I cram glue all around this thing, so it's going to be real fun taking out. But I didn't want to rely on any of those screws. And so, see, I can't, I can't even get this thing out. Like, I'm, it's not happening. So, it's... It's, it's in there. So I'm going to grab a chisel and we're going to see what we can do. I'm trying not to, uh, I really don't want to scratch this hatchet. Oh, there we go. The other side's in there. See that? All right, so I will say um, this stuff, it held really, really tight. And I don't think this thing would have, um, I don't think this thing would have come out at all if I hadn't just applied the amount of pressure that I did on it with the chisel to get this uh, top cap off. So when we do the reinstall, I'm going to show you the glue portion. I would strongly recommend you guys do that. Um, that way, <laughs> man, I think this thing would have stayed in here. And this is a great test. I think this thing would have stayed in here 
with no screws at all, just how it was glued, um, to be a hundred percent with you. But, um, we're going to, we're going to use the screws, but now I need to get this thing out and I don't, I'm, I don't know how I'm going to do it. And I may not film doing it cause I'm going to, uh, I'm going to definitely need two hands. All right, all set. That was not so bad at all. Um, got the old one out. So now we're going to take the new one and I'm going to talk about start for starters, how we drilled this hole, what I used, and then how uh, this needs to be modified. Okay, for starters, let's talk about this hatch. You'll notice that it's got a two inch diameter hole drilled through it. There's oil based paint on the inside of the hole. The carpet does not roll inside of the hole. The carpet actually just sits flush on top and it's cut out with a razor knife, okay? Because there's no need to roll your carpet inside because do you see how that lip has that indentation on this carpet? I don't know if you guys can see that discoloration. This actually will sit over your carpet and hold your carpet down. So there's no need to try to force carpet in there and staple it and roll it under the edge like you would around the perimeter of a hatch. All right, so two inch hole, razor knife carpet, oil based paint inside the hole sealing it. You'll notice on this hatch, I actually notched my, my double up or my runner underneath. I add runners for structural support because I'm running 11 32nd plywood. So I add a runner on these. I cut my runner back to allow spacing, all right, just perfect for the bottom side of my latch to bolt in, all right? All these things need to be planned in advance. All right, back here, you'll see I did something a little bit different. Kind of made my, I kind of did things different as I went along. This one, I actually, um, cut the runner and cut a hole in the runner wide enough to accommodate this. But then the, the hole in the actual decking is smaller. I don't even know if that makes sense, but essentially it's a smaller hole in the decking and a wider hole in the, through the runner before I put the runner on to accommodate the latch. Um, later on, I decided there's no need to do any of that. And if I were to rebuild this today, I'd probably just, cut my runner and go around this all together. But the rear end was the first thing I fabricated on this boat. And I'll be honest with you, I was kind of making it up as I went along. Now you'll notice this hatch here. I don't think this one has a runner. Reason being, my battery goes back here and I have clearance issues. So this one just goes straight through. All right, so what I'm trying to get at guys is it just kind of really varies on your situation. Um, this hatch here, I can get it open. No runner because it's so small. It's just the uh, live oil chill mod slash ice box. So, um, basically, basically the runners, the runners could play a part in your location. So I guess all I'm trying to say is there's more than one way, obviously, because I showed you that way. I showed you no runner and I showed you doubled up runners with the hatch lid actually accommodating the flush mount system. And then this one where it just goes around it all together. More than one way to do it um, as far as that goes. I've done it all different ways. I find, I find that if I were to build a boat tomorrow, a second boat... I would just do a runner and stay clear of all this area wherever you think that this is going to be. Um, I try to get fancy with it on a lot of this stuff. And it looks really cool, but it's a it's a total pain in the A. So the other thing you're going to need is obviously, obviously a drill. And a uh, hole saw. You're definitely going to need a hole saw. I'm just going to tell you right now, it's a two inch. All right, two inch for this is what you need. Okay, so you need the drill, you need a two inch hole saw, and obviously you need your framing in place and you need to have at least fabricated your decking. You don't necessarily have to have the carpet in. Um, I did mine prior to carpet. Um, and then honestly, some of them I did after carpet. 
you could literally take that hole saw and after carpet, you could drill straight through the carpet and the decking and then come back in and seal the inside of the hole with some kind of paint or silicone or adhesive or whatever you're fancy. Um, your measurement, as far as, that's the, that's the big thing a lot of people, what's the measurement? It, well, it varies. Um, up here, I'll tell you right now, on this hatch, okay, it's three quarters of an inch framing that my decking is sitting on. So the general rule from what I've seen on my boat is you want to be an inch and a half off your framing is that going to be the center of the hole for your two inch hole. So an inch and a half plus the three quarters is two and a quarter. And if you come back here, and you measure that, it's two and a quarter to the center of the hole. Okay, right here is another example. Now back here on this hatch, okay, my framing's a little different. So I'm sitting on an inch and a half of my framing, okay? So obviously we want another inch and a half to the center of where the latch will be. So that's a three inch measurement, okay? Right here, three inches to the center of that latch. Up here, it's gonna be different. Live well, Let's see if I get this stuff out of the way. Live well, we've got like three, what is that, three and three quarters. So I must be sitting on a lot here. Yeah, and I am. I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on the lip of this, which is two and a half. Okay, and I've got, see I plan in advance. I put wood here. That's actually wood, and I'm gonna, I have yet to bolt my, um, my bracket in that goes here to catch it. So this is just sitting right now. It's just sitting there. It's actually not, not attached to anything. So it just varies, guys. Um, it varies on your framing. If all of your framing is the exact same, then all your holes should be in the exact same spot on your, on your latches. Um, but if your if your framing is different, like mine, I just showed you, is different throughout the boat. Um, you're just going to have to add an inch and a half to whatever your framing is that your latch or your hatch is covering. All right, so the main thing with this latch that we're going to do is this goes through your hole, okay? And you've got this mechanism, all right, that's going to lock in to this guy right here, okay? But before you get that far, all right, these latches are made for quarter inch is what it says in the item description. I, I don't know if there's different ones out there, guys. I, I've ordered these, and this is what I've seen. So quarter inch. So the issue is, is when you put this cover on, it's made for quarter inch. I'm not running quarter inch decking. I'm running 11 32nd with runners. So we might as well just call it roundabouts of half inch for the most part. So we've got to modify these things because what happens is when you try to put it on anything bigger than a quarter inch, this goes up and it makes contact with that mechanism. All right. So all we're going to do is just modify this thing. We're going to cut that out. Okay. You see how that's, that one's cut, the one that I removed? You're just going to simply cut that out, all right? My weapon of choice is a Dremel with a cutting wheel. I've come to find that this coping saw works really well too. So whatever you want to do, pick your poison. Um, the goal is to take it from that to that to give you clearance to accommodate whatever size hatch you're running. All right, simple enough. One little cut. Got our two inch hole. Gonna take the latch. All right, we're just gonna slide this bad boy in place. Okay. Get it straight. Now we're gonna use some glue. All right, got my caulk gun and my Gorilla Construction Adhesive. What I'm gonna do with this, and you kinda saw it 
in the beginning because I kind of did the deconstruction before I'm doing the install is I'm just going to glue this thing in here. There's some air get, air pockets and some voids. I'm just going to fill that in with that adhesive. So it'll hopefully set this thing up to prevent it from spinning. Okay. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually um, going to glue on the bottom of this. Okay. And then sandwich that in there. All right. But this is actually supposed to go like this. Okay. So what I'm doing is instead of going by their design, I'm flipping this over. All right, and that gives me a flat surface to glue to, and then there's no air pocket in there. There's no void. So what I can do is I can um, actually tighten this and sandwich everything together, and then it gives me, lastly, the ability to drill a hole diagonally on both sides and hit that wood and, and give me the ability to stick a stainless screw on each side and kind of toenail this thing in really, really tight. So let's do it. All right, got her all filled up with that adhesive. Okay, I've got it on the back side. And I'm just going to sandwich this in. Okay. And I will be retaining the two small screws that came with the latch. I'm going to go ahead and even though I flip this, they're still going to fit into that hole and, um, and lock in nicely. And I know I said it all the time, but... I'm actually using a screwdriver to tighten these because if you use a drill, I promise you, you'll torque this thing out and strip that plastic and then you'll never be able to tighten it. So I'd recommend hand tightening. Got my drill, my drill bit. I'm running on this one a 764th bit, but honestly you could run anything smaller than the diameter of the screw. I'm going to show you a second the screw I'm using and all I'm doing is just drilling at about a 45 degree angle just diagonally. I'm going dead center. Alright holes drilled and I'm going to use number six half inch stainless steel screws. All right, got my screws screwed in, and I don't know if you could see those, but you see how these guys, they just go at an angle, okay? Um, they're hitting the wood, so everything, so I've got my, this part screwed down, attached to the latch itself, okay? The latch is running through the hole, everything's glued together, and then as one more measure, I've got the two stainless screws drilled at an angle, hitting wood, and screwing this into the hatch to prevent it from from uh, spinning and just to add strength. So that's how I did it. Let's uh let's look at the actual hatch catch. All right, finally, lastly, we're gonna cover this little part here. This is the catch for the latch. Um, it's simple enough, guys. You're just gonna mount this to your framing. And if your math is right on where you put your latch, then your catch should catch it perfectly or pretty close to perfect. There's room for error. Um, I'm not going to sit here and show you step by step because all you're going to do is just attach a bracket. So I think I think you guys' skill set can handle that. But what I will show you is um, the measurement. So all you're going to do is simply measure the, the air space under here from your hatch to the to the top of this piece of plastic because what's going to happen is if you could see this down here and you can envision this is going to be mounting your framing so this is just going to catch this that's all that's happening underneath your decking okay so what i do is i just take my tape i butt the carpet because the carpet's going to hold the carpet's going to hold you off your framing so i just butt the carpet and it's right at uh three eighths seven sixteenths so you're just going to come down here and you're going to find center and you're just going to pull your measurement down and see, you can tell I'm, I'm pretty much dead on. That looks like about seven sixteenths from where I'm sitting and you're just going to mount your bracket. Now I would recommend when you mount it, put your screws in the middle. See how that's an oval, put your screws dead center of that. Therefore, if you go to close this and it doesn't want to catch, or it's catching and holding it up too high, 
that's that's simply where your uh, where your brackets mounted. You could adjust it up and down, and that that'll pull the hatch down or push it up. So just a little tip. And then lastly, if for some reason your math is off of where you put this, um, I would say if it's too far in, then what you can do if it's too far in is you could take a grinder and you could actually grind some of this metal off to make it smaller. And then that'll give you more clearance. Or if you're too far out with your math and it's not catching this at all, I'll show you what I did back here. You can take... Um, or did I do it under here? I think I did it under this one. You just simply take some some kind of washers. And here I use some, some very heavy-duty plastic grommets or washers. I guess they're washers. And um, I just spaced that out. And see, it looks really nice. Um, I'm just shimming that out so uh, so this latch will catch it. So there's just another little tip. Um, I don't know what I did on this one, to be honest with you. <sighs> I must have had too many San Pellegrinos that day. Um, guys, they're locking. They do come with keys, so they are locking. Um, granted, I've ordered them from eBay and Amazon on two different occasions, and they've all came with the same set of keys. So if any of you guys order these, you'll have keys to my boat, and I'll have keys to yours. How about that? uh one other thing before i let you guys go i don't i know there's slam latches flush pull slam latches but i don't slam on because i noticed after just slamming them a few times they were it was kind of beating up the latch and you know after you take all this work and modify them and spend this you know this money to to get them and i just don't want to break them so what i do is i i gently I just I just do this and it works out fine for me um, now granted if you really want to I mean you could sit here and slam them all day if that's really what you want to do but I don't I don't want to break them I want them to last the life of my boat but that's just my prerogative guys you do what you want to do um, I want to see them not fall apart so I'll just be easy does it kind of guy um also my my boat's garage kept so it's not sitting out in the sun baking all day therefore this plastic i'm not worried about it cracking or fading or dry rotting so if my boat were outside if you got a boat that's gonna be sitting outside you might want to look into a different option than these but these are more cost effective um and that's it man that's up to you guys uh i think i've covered everything i hope i did i'm calling it a night guys thank you for tuning in Y'all have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one. We're going to uh, actually go over gas struts. Have a good one. Thank you.